Okay. All right, everybody. Hello, uh, I'm Kat McGee, and uh, I am the deputy ranking member on science, technology, and energy, and welcome to STU. We are the STU crew. We're part of the STU crew. Uh, STU is science, technology, and energy women. And so uh, we decided that it would be fun for us to get together and give you some information about what's going on on our committee and with energy and technology in, uh, in the New Hampshire Science, Technology and Energy Committee. So I'm gonna start off, we're gonna do introductions. Um, so I already mentioned that I'm deputy ranking member. It's my second term on st &E. And my background is in technology where I was a software program manager and I'm a project management professional. Um, and I, I have a master's in um, psychology, which is actually very helpful in the house. <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. Um, my name is Rebecca McWilliams. I'm also a second term on st &E representative. Um, my background is I'm an architect, uh, so focus on energy efficiency and building codes. Um, I'm also an attorney, uh, so policy crafting and specific language for bills like net metering. Um, and uh, big picture, I'm really interested in leaving the planet better than I came into the planet at. So uh, I've got three kids and I care deeply about the future of New Hampshire. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, I'm Jackie Cretion. I am a second term uh, state rep from Manchester. Uh, last term I was on the Environment and Agriculture Committee and this term um, is my first on st and &E, which is very exciting. Um, as far as my background, I have a PhD in molecular and cell biology from UC Berkeley, um, and I spend my time editing science papers, so I uh, get to look at a lot of data in a lot of different fields, uh, which is very helpful for interpreting some of the information that we get shown uh, here on ST&E. Um, and similar to Rebecca, I, I have three kids, we both have twins <laughs> as well, um, so definitely very interested in leaving the planet good for them um, in a way that, you know, they can enjoy the, the snow sports and uh, outdoor niceness that, that we got to grow up with here in New Hampshire. Great. Uh, I think we're just going to start off, we're going to keep our episodes short, and we're going to do a series of episodes on a bunch of different um, issues that are facing us. But we wanted to start out with how we see our role uh, as policymakers. So what do st &E representatives do on our committee? So does anybody want to lead us off on that? Sure. So I think um, let's back up and talk about drafting and submitting bills. Uh, before the session starts, usually in November, December, um, we come up with ideas or we recycle ideas or our constituents reach out to us and give us ideas uh, for things that are, would be a good potential bill or policy for New Hampshire to have or tweak. Um, so we put those together and we submit them as potential bills to the Office of Legislative Services. Um, I think that's probably the most powerful thing that we can do is start the conversation about changes in New Hampshire. So I see the policy making role in submitting bills as a big part of our role um, as representatives and also as members of st and &E. I think I want to jump in and, and back up also because in my intro, I didn't mention um, why I was interested in having a seat at the st &E table and that there's actually a history in my background of um, being involved with the Kinder Morgan Northeast Energy Direct Pipeline, which was going through Northern Mass at the time with a spur through my hometown of Hollis. And I ended up uh, chairing a task force in town uh, to try and go through the statutes and figure out what kind of defenses we could put up as a town in a Dillon's rule state where, um, you know, the town doesn't really have any say, especially with um, an interstate project like that. It has federal jurisdiction. So even the state site evaluation committee um, has a limited amount of say on those types of things. So it was a learning experience for me to figure out all of those issues and the context for which, for how energy projects go forward. And it led me to understanding that those energy decisions that we're making are extremely impactful, not only for, you know, the future that we want for our kids and grandkids, I have grandkids, um, but also for the state's economy. And so I just thought we could be making better decisions. And um, I ended up serving on the National Regional Planning Commission's Energy Facility Advisory Committee 
after that stint um, on the task force and learned more about the independent system operators. I had direct access to the Kinder Morgan folks. So the whole time that that project was going on, I was heavily involved and going up to Concord and, um, and testifying. So it was kind of a evolution to get to the point where I'm at the table. And I am kind of a big picture person. So I still am in a position where I look at our role as figuring out what goals the state should be trying to attain and then how we create a plan to achieve those goals. So uh, for me, I don't like just the one-off throwing things at the wall to see what sticks. I'm always looking for, you know, where's the plan? <laughs> so. The project manager <laughs> coming up for sure. Um, yeah, so that story actually, I think, segues nicely into um, what I had wanted to say about our, our role and really thinking of the role of government and representatives as being a voice for, for people. So, you know, corporations and, and lobbyists have... Um, you know, pl plenty of resources and, and plenty of voice and, and plenty of influence in terms of getting things to move forward. Um, it's harder, I think, to to have the people represented in a, in a sort of organized and powerful way. Um, and that's really my hope is that we, we can be here and sort of ask those questions of like, OK, well, what are really the longer term impacts of projects going forward or projects that don't go forward? Um, you know, what's the vision that we have for things that are going to make people's lives better and, and healthier and how do we achieve that and, and how can we be that voice for, you know, the person who is not super well versed in, in energy policy or not thinking on 50 to 75 year time horizons, um, but in government, I think that's what we should be doing. Um, I'm not so sure we're doing that <laughs> this no, season, so. No, um, I, I think people sense that too. I think people have an understanding that government's not <laughs> operating on all cylinders right now. And I'm sure we're going to talk more about that in, in future episodes. Um, but I, I think you're right. I think that there's also differing perspectives politically in terms of what the role of government is. And I know we, we, we all want to have something to say about that. But I agree with you, Jackie, that um, if no one's looking out for the long-term perspective, then we're all going to lose because especially with something as complex and in transition as energy is, you really have to have some forward thinking plans. You can't just leave it to chance. Thank you for joining us for Stu. We'll see you next time. <laughs>